Go ahead and take your seats. You know, there's no better place to be than in the presence of the Holy Spirit. I feel such an anointing here today, and I believe God's going to do something here. You know, the Holy Spirit can do a lot with thankful people. I think that gratefulness, thanksgiving, the Bible says you enter his gates with thanksgiving. And when you enter the presence of the Holy Spirit, you enter the very presence of wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to make right choices and to make right decisions. Everything that happens to you is because of a decision that you have made or someone else made. And that affects your life in a, in a, in a tremendous way. I've been talking to you about the difference between the promises of God and the principles of God. When you were born again, you came out of spiritual death. It was impossible for you to have the revelation that God wanted you to have in your life. You needed to be born again. So your spirit came alive, and now you are connected and the Holy Spirit can minister to you and train you, teach you what you need to know so that you can do what you're called to do, fulfill your purpose in life. The promises of God, the Bible says are yes and amen. They're there for us. But just because they're there doesn't mean we're receiving them and walking in them. The reason for that is because we've not been taught We've been ministered to about the rapture, the great escape, I call it. But we've not been taught much about how to live here. And Jesus said, occupy until I come. Be about the Father's business. Is he returning? Yes, he is. Do we know when? No, we don't. So in the meantime, let's get busy. Let's find out what it is God wants us to do. We have promises in the word of God and principles. These are the keys to the kingdom that Jesus said that he had given us. The keys. Keys, no matter how small, unlock big doors. My car only needs one key to crank it up. And my car has this electronic key. And I'm used to grabbing a physical key and putting it in the ignition. But my key today has changed. My car has been updated. So all I have to do is have the key in my pocket. Now, the key in my pocket is a promise the car will start. But there's one other thing that I have to do. I've got to push this little brown, this little silver button, and it says press to start. In the beginning, I wasn't familiar with this process. But I learned quickly that if I wanted to go somewhere that I had to push the start button. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, I want to take you to the book of Jeremiah today, and I want to take a look at the the call of God on Jeremiah's life. And I want you to put yourself in his position. I want you to see God's reaction, how God responds to Jeremiah, and how Jeremiah responds to God. But we'll start in Jeremiah 1, and we're going to read this scripture. We'll start in verse 4 in just a moment. You know, we had a debt cancellation service a few weeks ago here, right before I left for China. If you can believe God for healing, you can also believe God to cancel debts. 
The only reason we don't is because we've not been taught to believe God for that. Faith cometh by hearing. So it's impossible to have faith for without having knowledge of. I got an email this morning of some testimonies that we can add to some of the testimonies we've heard here. One lady told me that she had a $40,000 reduction in her mortgage. I, I don't know how that happened, and I, I don't care. I know she doesn't care. She's running around the house rejoicing. Another lady sent me a testimony. She said, Apostle Jonas, somebody put $10,000 in my bank account. Now, my response to that is me too. God is no respecter of persons. Somebody say, me too. Now, this is only just the last few days have I heard these testimonies. Another brother told me that he had an insurance settlement for $20,000. And um, he wrote him a letter and said, I think you made a mistake. Can you please look at this again? And he called me last week, and he said, Apostle Jonas, you won't believe this. I like it when people say you won't believe this. Because <laughs> really, we should be believing it. <laughs> but it's amazing that a person that could say you won't believe this had something spectacular happen to them. So there must have been faith somewhere along the line. Somebody has to believe before God will respond. And he told me, he said, I got a letter with a check, not for 20000 but for 70000 And I responded like you, me too. me too. Me too. Another sister emailed me, and she said that she's a, she's a single mom, but she has a business, okay? And um, she said she put on the table that she needed some, some new customers or some more customers. And she said, she sent the email, and she said, I got four new customers. And she said, they're big customers. Look at somebody and tell them, God is on your side. He knows what you need. He knows what you need. Hallelujah. I hope this spreads because the people of God need to get out of debt and not get back into debt again. Somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit this morning. Lord, we know we are entering into a realm with you we've not been in before. But we do humble ourselves, and we thank you that you're here. For we are grateful people, ready to hear what the Spirit of God has to say to us. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. I want to share with you some things that the Holy Spirit's been talking to me about this week. It's very different than last week. But in Jeremiah, let's look at the call of Jeremiah, how he responds, and Let's look at what we do here. Now, let me read the testimony. We'll start with verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you. I set you apart. I gave you a cause, a purpose. I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. I don't think there's any greater call that a person could have than to be a spokesman or a voice for God. And all of us can speak what the Spirit of God is saying. I think there's a level of spiritual maturity that we as 
the body of Christ need to come into that we've not been into before. I think there's a greater place than how we see church today. I see around the throne of God a a place of fiery revelation where the Spirit of God mentors us one-on-one, trains us, teaches us, instructs us, leads us, opens our eyes to things we've not seen before, where we begin to hear in a different way, something very different than what we've been into in the past. Where we can hear the voice of God even in other people. And those bits of revelation come into our spirit like seeds that come up and produce a harvest in us first and then around about us. But God ordained him to be a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. That's Jeremiah's response to the call of God. I'm not qualified. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Words are very important to God. Then he says in verse 10, he uses the word see, S-E-E. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out, to throw down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. The purpose of the word of God. The purpose of the word of God. Before you can operate in it, you've got to see it. Verse 11, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? What can you see? Where are you at in me? What can you see? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Now, I don't have time to talk about that rod, but only to say it represented spiritual authority. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. When I was meditating on this this week, I, I saw immediately the response of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, after being called of God, challenged God. He said, oh, Lord, I'm not able I'm just a child challenging God. What he's saying is I'm I'm not qualified to do what you have called me to do. And in the very beginning of the launch of Jeremiah into ministry, God had to correct him. How many people have been called by God today? But yet they argue with God and say, God, I'm not able. I'm not qualified. I don't have the last right name. I don't have a large enough bank account. I only have a church with a few sheep. Unqualified. 
I cannot speak. I'm a child. I'm not qualified. And here's what I want you to see. Before Jeremiah could enter the call of God on his life, God had to correct his language. God can't do anything with you until you change your language. One of the things I want to point out to you is that God is very affected by your words. It affects God. God is very sensitive. The Holy Spirit is very sensitive to how you respond to his instruction, how you respond to his presence, how you react to his instruction. He's very sensitive to that. And before God could launch Jeremiah, he had to correct his language. Do you know that language affects the spiritual climate around you? And if language can affect your spiritual climate around you, then you can use language to design the spiritual climate around you. A climate that the Holy Spirit likes to flow in. There is an environment, a, a climate that the Spirit of God loves. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. God inhabits the praises of his people. Think about that for a moment. That means that when you praise God, that he fills you with his presence, that something is happening to you spiritually when God, the Holy Spirit, comes into your and fills your praise. God responds to praise. I believe the Holy Spirit can do a lot with people that are thankful and grateful. People that honor his presence. One of the greatest battles I see as I travel in different parts of the world is I see a disrespect for the Holy Spirit. I see more respect for music than I do for God. Music is a wonderful thing. But the Apostle Paul did not have a worship team when he traveled the world preaching the gospel. In order for us to enter these new things that God has for us, we must align ourselves. We must adjust ourselves and be able to hear what is the Spirit of God saying to us. What does God have to correct in order for us to be the person he's called us to be? What language comes out of our mouth? Why is it that we can argue with God? Words affect God in a very strong way. It's amazing to me. I've seen the Holy Spirit back up from people. I've seen the Holy Spirit move away quickly when people disrespect his presence. See, what you value, you have access to. What you disrespect is instruction to disconnect. Yeah? I was, I was meditating here. Because in Proverbs 18, 21, you don't have to go there. I'll just read these things myself. But it says, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Let's say it another way. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. 
that can life your call, life your ministry, or hinder it, buffet it, life and death in the power of the tongue. The words that come out of your mouth can change the spiritual climate. Remember this, we want a climate where the Holy Spirit likes because when we get into that presence, we are full of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. We know what to do. We don't have to wrestle with the decisions anymore. We don't have to fear. We can enter into the presence of the Holy Spirit and get wisdom way beyond our years, way beyond any counselors. Today, the world is full of propaganda. I mean, I, I watched the news for a few minutes. I'm like, I can't take this anymore. This is all just nothing that God is saying. Because, you know, I watch things on television about this catastrophe is about to happen and that one's about to happen and this one's about to happen. And I'm thinking, that's not true because the Holy Spirit didn't say that to me. And if God will rescue Lot, if God will send angel to speak to Lot before he destroys cities, then God will speak to me as well. And he'll speak to you too. So I don't go to the newspaper to hear tomorrow's news. I go to the Holy Spirit to hear tomorrow's news. In 2 Kings 3, 15, Elijah called for a, a minstrel. You remember that? Why did he do that? Because there's just something about music, the prophetic word, the presence of God, where you are opening the spiritual climate or for the Holy Spirit to come in and move. Now, remember, if life and death are in the power of the tongue, then it means that you choose what lives and what dies. You choose what lives or what dies in your life. You choose that. God had to correct Jeremiah before he could enter his ministry, that, that apostolic call. to overcome, tear down, throw down, destroy before he could build and plant. That apostolic call, before he could get there, he had to correct his language. Life and death, the ability to speak the word of God in your life, in your ministry, in your family, in your city, in your nation. Life and death in the power of the tongue. You choose what lives and what dies. In 1 Samuel 10, 5 and 6, it speaks of King Saul, or we could just call him Saul, when he came into the presence of the prophets. That prophetic spirit came on him, and he began to prophesy like the other prophets and People were saying to Saul also amongst the prophets. What happened to him? It shows you that connection has a result. The church you go to, the set man you're connected to, Those that are planted, the Lord says, connected to the gift of God. You know, we have a communion service, and we use the scripture that says that there are many sick amongst you because they don't rightly discern the body. Do you know that in the body of Christ that God gave gifts to men, some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, other gifts? Somebody say the word gift. Now, when 
you get a gift, what do you say? Thank you. But you can't draw out if you don't recognize the gift. That's why Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, if you knew the gift that was sitting next to you, if you knew the uncommon man that you were sitting next to, you wouldn't be asking me common questions. You would be asking me uncommon questions, and I would be giving you uncommon answers if you knew the gift. That's why it's so important for us to understand who are you talking to. Saul entered the presence of the prophets. He entered into an atmosphere. He entered into the presence of the word of God. The anointing on the prophets came on him. I had a man years ago tell me it didn't matter what church you went to. That was a sad word I heard from him because it does matter. Don't be so so hard-hearted that you don't recognize how important it is to be around the presence of God. When you need prayer, you need somebody that believes to pray for you. There's a difference in reading scriptures and then having somebody that believes those scriptures read them. I saw a pastor many years ago. He was a great preacher, but I never saw a move of God in his services. And I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, this, this is a good man. He's a good man. He loves you, and he preaches good, and everybody likes good preaching. I do too. I don't like to carry the burden all the time, and, you know, I don't have as much fun as some of you because I have to fight my way through. But I asked God, I said, God, what's up with this? Why is it this man? Why aren't you anointing this man? And the Lord said to me, he doesn't believe what he's preaching. See, Saul entered and exited the presence of the prophets. He entered it and experienced revelation from God, but he didn't honor the presence of God. And he exited that presence. You get to choose what lives and what dies in your life and in your ministry. God had to correct Jeremiah's language before God could touch his mouth. I want to give you just a short list of things that the Holy Spirit was just sharing with me about language and about words. Again, we get to choose what lives and what dies. How you respond to God is so important because he listens. Write this down. Words, language, affects the spiritual climate around you. Something all of us have to to guard. We forget sometimes that God is listening. Before Jeremiah could enter the call of God, even though God had called him before he was even in his mother's womb, God had to correct his language. I want to anoint you. I want to send you to the nations, but you can't talk like that. You can't represent me as the word of God, a spokesman for me, the voice of God. And tell people that you're not qualified. I believe that who God calls, God will qualify. 
God's not trying to help you become a great preacher or philosopher. He wants you to be his voice. When you read the first couple chapters of Genesis, and if that's all that we had was the first two chapters of Genesis, then we would only know God as a voice. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. God spoke it into being. In the very beginning, all we know about God is he's a voice that creates. And you and I don't understand the power of the authority that God has put inside of us when we gave our hearts to Jesus and we became born again, washed by the blood of the Lamb of God. When God called us out of darkness, moved us from darkness into his spiritual kingdom, into a kingdom of salt and light, a city set on a hill where we can be the voice or the ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a tremendous, tremendous call of God upon our lives. But before God can use us to full capacity, we've got to correct our language. It's not easy. I think we blow it all the time, but we can always get back on the horse. We can always keep going again. Words steer your life. There was a big show over the weekend of jumpers down in, my, in South Beach. Maybe you saw that. A $300,000 prize for the winner. These horses are $100,000 animals. Some of them are half a million dollars. Bill Gates' daughter was there. She was 21. She's jumping one of these million-dollar horses. And all of these other people are there. But if you look at these magnificent animals, there is a little bit in their mouth. The horse is a million dollars, and they have a, a $300 little piece of steel here. And there's a real science to measuring that and having it custom made. And then when you put it in, how many wrinkles in the corner of the horse's mouth should it be? You don't pull it all the way back because it hurts the horse. You don't make it all loose, and then he's biting like that. He doesn't know where the bit is. He can't get it in the right position. But they put that bit in the horse's mouth. They get two little wrinkles here. That's far enough. And the rider can steer that horse to the left, a million-dollar horse, to the left or to the right. I talked to Franklin Hall, who trained the Olympic riders for England two times in a row. And I went to his farm up in South Carolina, and we spent the day together. He's, a, he's deceased today, but anybody that's trained world champions twice is somebody that knows something about horses. And I spent the day with him. I, kept all, I put down all my notes of all the questions I asked him. And he had a, a teaching style that was quite different than the other teachers that I had known that taught these people how to show jump, training horses. He told me that the bit has to fit just right in the horse's mouth. He said it's so very important. He said if a horse can feel a fly on its back, that shows you how sensitive the horse is to being steered with the bit. He told me a horse can actually tell where you're looking at. 
And when he trains his team, he says, look where you're going and the horse will follow. The power of seeing. Isn't that amazing? I spent a whole day with him writing down all this. One day I'll have to pull my notes and just show you all the things that he never, he never yelled at his students. He would always say things to them. Uh, Ruth, what would it be like if you just sat back just a little bit further? What would it be like if you just dropped your hands just a little bit? What would it be like? That's the way he taught. James taught us that words steer our life. If you don't like the direction of your life, change it. Change it. Life and death, you get to choose. You get to choose what lives and what dies in your life and in your ministry. Choose you this day. Words have a powerful effect on God. You know the testimony of blind Bartimaeus? Blind Bartimaeus by the wayside and all the religious people tried to tell him to shut up and be quiet, but he cried out all the more. And as he cried out, something happened. The Bible says that Jesus stopped and turned his way. Language affects God. Can you imagine a miracle environment and language affecting God and turning God towards you? That's what happened with blind Bartimaeus. His words had an effect on Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus stopped. Hallelujah, somebody, and turned his way and asked him, what do you want? Words cause Jesus to ask a question, what do you want? Am I doing all right here today? You know, I feel some resistance. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's unbelief. It's unbelief. Jesus went to his own hometown and could do not many works there. Why? Because the anointing one is in your presence and you still don't believe. Wow. Don't associate yourself with people that don't have God in their heart. What do they have for you? What fellowship does light have with darkness? Words reveal unbelief and doubt. Lord, I'm not qualified. I'm just a child. I'm not qualified. I'm just a child. And God said, don't say that. I can't use you if you act like that. I can't anoint you if you say things like that. I can't send you to the nations with you speaking like that. Don't use that language in my presence. I can't put my words in your mouth. Unbelief is like the flu. It spreads. Can you imagine God calling you and then you tell God, well, I'm not qualified. God, you can't call me. I'm not qualified. I'm just a, I'm just a child. When God ministers to you, watch what comes out of your mouth. Words reveal if you're ready to be used of God or not. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Words are proof of change. Proof of change. Have you ever asked the Holy Spirit, how do you, how do you grow? How do you mature? We know that we have to renew our minds with the word of God. Why is that? It's because you're crazy. You're goofy. You've got baggage. You've got experiences that maybe they were good, but maybe they weren't good. So you have to renew your mind because you don't know everything. You're not God. 
So you have to renew your mind with the word of God. But you can't renew your mind by praying in tongues. Should you pray in tongues? Absolutely. Do I believe in praying in tongues? You better believe it. I'll pray for you today if you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. But praying in tongues is not renewing your mind. That's building up your spirit. You can't renew your mind by praising God. You can't remove, renew your mind by chanting like the New Agers do. You renew your mind by meditating on the truths that are in God's word. And you let the entrance of his word bring light inside of you. Amen. So that you grow and mature. And then you apply what God has said to you. And then the warfare comes, and, the, and when the warfare comes, that you fight back because God has given you the sword of the Spirit and the Word of God. Amen. And you move forward, and you fight the devil and fight the giants that come against you because God has given you spiritual authority. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Amen. The commanding heights. The next one. Every call of God, everyone, has a language of faith. Has a language of faith. You know that God anoints those words, those faith-filled words that come out of your mouth? Did you know that? A couple of weeks ago, I think the first service back from China when I was praying for you, I felt an anointing that was like a whirlwind inside me. And what released it was when, uh, was people of faith. I believe that faith activates the anointing. You know, I could be running around here and shouting today. I've been preaching for 33 years. And I could come here and I could preach and shout and run around and stir you emotionally and never reach you spiritually. God doesn't lead us through emotions. We have emotions, we enjoy them, amen. But God feeds you in your spirit. Every permanent breakthrough in your life happens first in your born-again spirit. If you want change in your life and you want purpose in your life, you're going to get it from the Holy Spirit. Everything else is just activity. It's Martha being busy in the kitchen while you ignore the weightier things, ministering to Jesus. The next one, the kingdom of God is voice activated. You and I need to understand that there's a kingdom here called the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is here. It's all around you. The angels of God are camped all around us here. You are part of this kingdom. When you came out of spiritual death, you came into spiritual life. And you are now in the kingdom. The kingdom was designed by God. You were designed by God. You are uniquely designed. There's nobody like you. That's why you can't compare yourself with anyone else. There is no one like you. You have no duplicate in China. There's only one you, and you're so important, and you matter to God. You are one of the elements that make up the joints that provide increase to the body of Christ. And the fullness of God enters that kingdom and enters that body. And God has hidden bits of his knowledge and his wisdom in each and every one of us. There is something God has hidden in you that's important to all of us. When God designed the kingdom, 
He designed the kingdom to be voice activated. Jesus said, if you speak to that mountain and command it to move, it'll move out of the way. Why? Because mountains were designed by God to obey the word. When you understand how God created you with authority, anointed you, given you his words, put his words on your mouth, commanded you to speak into the nations of the earth. Can you imagine what we have, the advantage that we have as born-again believers? I think there's a place in God we have not got to yet. So many weights and so many distractions and so much propaganda and, and all this war battling for your attention. Spiritual climates being challenged by demonic activity. Demons wanting to deceive you, to distract you. You know when devils walk in this door, you know what they think? You know what comes to a demon's mind when he walks in the door? Not everybody that comes through that door is supposed to be here. Not everybody that, not everybody that knocks on your door belongs inside your house. They need to be qualified. That's why you have little people on your door. So you can look and see who is it. You're discerning what is at your door before you open the door. But in a church, in this public place, not everyone that comes through the door belongs here. Some of them are dogs, wolves, false prophets, goats. But when a demon walks in, the demon says, is there anybody like me here? Is there anybody here that I can distract? Is there anybody here that I can turn them away from the voice of God? Hmm. Spiritual discernment, not suspicion, not suspicion, discernment. Devils are always uncomfortable in the presence of God. That's why they say, let us alone. What have we had to have to do with you, Jesus? Have you come to destroy us before our time? The kingdom of God is voice activated. Write this down. When you change the way you think, you will change the way you speak. Mm -hmm. Number 10, have you guys been keeping track? Number 10, the Holy Spirit watches your response to his instruction. Hmm. The instruction you obey determines the benefits that you receive. Jeremiah's language had to be corrected before he could walk in the instruction. Just think about the anointing that was on Jeremiah's life. Wow. Do you know that Jeremiah said that that he felt like a drunk man. He was so anointed by the power of God. Fire shut up in his bones. Wow. Power of God on his life. When he spoke the word, things happened. People were arrested by the power of God. Hallelujah. Number 11. Obedience to God determines your experience with God. 
Are you obedient? You know, obedience requires correction. Proof of sonship is the ability to take correction. Don't tell me we don't have a problem. Nobody likes correction. But, you know, it's easy to receive correction, or I should say easier to receive correction from people you know that love you. And they're not criticizing you just because of some alternative motive. But they love you. They want you to have the very best in your life. They want you to arise to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Number 12, who God calls, he qualifies. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God can qualify you? Do you believe God can qualify you? Do you believe God wants to use you in a mighty way? Do you want to be trained by the Holy Spirit? Write this down. Everything you say is affecting your life some way. Everything you say is affecting something in your future. What do you want your future to look like? What do you want your future to look like? Everything you say is affecting your future. Jesus cursed a fig tree one day. Do you remember that? But nobody saw anything happen. They thought Jesus was crazy. The disciples were saying, look at him. He's even talking to trees. He cursed a tree. They didn't see anything happen. But the next day they came. And Peter said, hey, Lord, remember the tree that you cursed yesterday? It's all shriveled up from the roots. But wait a minute. Jesus cursed the fig tree yesterday. When he cursed the fig tree, he released words. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And when he released those words, where did those words go? They went into his future. The words you are saying today are going into your future. They are designing your future. They are waiting for your arrival. Hallelujah. What do you want to put in your future? What do you want to put in your future? I'm almost done. (laughs) Hallelujah. You will always act like the person you think you are. Hmm. You will always act like the person you think you are. That's why God said you're part of a royal, regal priesthood of kings. You're not a slave. You're a king. Somebody shout, I'm a king. My God shall provide all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. I, I saw this, uh, this movie about some king the other day or some, some TV show, and I was telling Pastor Ron, I said, you know, those kings don't have what we have today. Even King Solomon didn't have what we have today. I have a, I have a, I already told you this, but I can change the temperature of my house by one degree. Solomon could not do that. In all of his splendor and all the powerful anointed and all of his wisdom, he could not change the temperature in his house by one degree like I can. I can fly to the other side of the world in 23 hours. Solomon could never do that and probably wouldn't want to. It's amazing what we have today. The blessings of God upon our life today. We have safe food today, clean water today. 
It's amazing what we have. Poverty is being conquered year by year by year. The ability to grow mass amounts of food on, on less and less parcels of land is amazing. The technology today is spectacular. I can't wait to see what God has in store for us in the future. I want my, I want, I want my, my, uh, my, what do you call it? My, my, um, my Star Trek cruiser. I want the, I want my replicator. You know, we have replicators coming on stream today. 3D printing, that's a replicator. Write this down, I'm almost done. You can't be strong in the Lord with a weak language. You can't be strong in the Lord with a weak language. Jeremiah's words, he challenged God. He said, oh, God, you can't call me. You can't use me. You can't anoint me. I'm just a child. I'm not qualified to be used of you. And God said, hold up right there. I've got to correct your language before I can put my words, my anointed on your mouth. Don't talk like that. Don't speak like that. Your words affect me. Your reaction to my call affects me. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You get to choose what lives and what dies in your life and in your ministry. Stand up on your feet. Praise team, come on up on the platform. I believe the power of God is in the house today. Anytime you get around Jesus, you get around a healing God. Anytime you get around the Holy Ghost, you get around the spirit of wisdom and understanding. You get around the spirit of power and might. When God anoints you, he anoints you for such a time as this right now. When God puts his spirit upon you, when God calls you out of darkness into light, God, he's the one that qualifies you. God designs you. God anointed his design. God designed the kingdom. He anointed his design. When God pulled you out of darkness and translated you into light, he says, I've given you a purpose. I've given you a cause to represent me. Choose what lives and what dies in your life. Your reaction to the Holy Spirit. Your reaction to blessing determines the timing of the next blessing. Your reaction to a move of God determines the next time God moves in your life. Words affect God. Praise affects God. Thanksgiving affects God. Gratefulness affects God. Elijah called for a minstrel to change his spiritual climate. Saul entered the presence of the prophets and the, the spiritual climate came on him. David called. David in the presence of a murdering Saul, began to play instruments and calm the, what was happening in the palace. There's just something about the presence of God that you've got to have in your life. We are now in the year 2018. So I want to challenge you to spend 18 minutes with the Lord Jesus Christ every morning in your life. 18 minutes, that's all, just 18, start there. Start there, 1-8. Come into your secret place, turn some worship music on something, not hip-hop. Don't put any Holy Ghost rap on, put some worship music on. And let that atmosphere begin to change. And enter God's presence with gratefulness and thankfulness. Don't talk for 18 minutes. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it will be given unto you. 
Herein is my Father pleased that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Are you a disciple today? 18 minutes. Last year was 17 minutes. We're going to get you one minute more this year. But when you get in that place, don't talk for 18 minutes. Because remember, a lot of people have changed prayers into giving God things to do. A list of God, if you'll do this and do this for me and do this for me and do that. You're giving God assignments. You're not worshiping him. You're giving him things to do. But come into his presence with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. In all things, give thanks to God. And then the spirit of wisdom will come upon you, the spirit of power and might. And God will give you these kind of things, these little gems that will strengthen your spirit. And you'll begin to see God in a way you've not seen him before. Remember, you are, you are a spirit. Hear me, you are a spirit. Let me say it again. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in a body. Your spirit man should be the one that dominates your life, not your soul, not your emotions. Those that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Do you believe that? Yes. Now I'm going to pray only for a particular group of people today. I don't want everybody coming down here. But if you have felt unqualified, if you have felt unqualified, that was the challenge that Jeremiah had. He felt unqualified. And if you're here and you have felt like that, I want you to come to this altar. I'm going to pray for you today to get past that fear, to get past that fear. So if that's you, come down. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's a difference between feeling unqualified and being unqualified. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Just let everybody come down that feels that way. Thank you, Lord. Can you play that song for me, the, um, the 23rd Psalm song? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit to be with us today. Lord, the best I know to do, I've released your word to the people. Holy Spirit of God, you are the one that anoints the word of God. And Lord, we do yield ourselves to your presence. And we thank you for this powerful anointing to break the spirit of fear, doubt, and unbelief. Oh, Holy Spirit, show yourself strong today. Oh, we do worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, when I lay my hands upon these people, we will break that spirit. For who the Lord calls... He does qualify. And Lord, we will not shrink back, but we will run to your altar to receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for confirmation of the Word of God, active and alive, moving inside of each and every one of us, bringing us up to a higher place in you, a place of greater purpose and greater revelation. Thank you, Lord, for the authority, the mantle of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the rod of Aaron that buds, hallelujah, the authority of God Almighty. Lord, reach down and touch the lips of these people today. Put fire in their bellies. Stir them with your spirit. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Church, just begin to pray with me in tongues. Will you do that? 
Let your spirit begin to minister unto the Lord. Let your spirit, come on, let your spirit worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we do worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Let's sing that song while I pray for him, okay?
Somebody pray with me. Come on, somebody pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I break the power of fear. I command it to go in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus, we command that spirit to let her go. Loose her right now in Jesus' name. You can't stay. Come out of her. Oh, you visiting spirit, I break the power of this curse. Go! Go in Jesus' name. Something's happening in here. Lord, we thank you for your anointing. And we touch our lips with the power of God. Oh, Jesus. Come on, somebody praising. Somebody exalt him. Hold up for a second. Hey, Zeus, is this your daughter? This is your daughter. That's what I thought. I want you just to stand next to your daughter. Hey, Zeus, you're a great man of God. I want you to listen to this, everybody. Because um, this happens to us and we don't understand why. You know, there's a, there's, a, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that, that God visits the iniquities upon the third and the fourth generation. It doesn't mean God does it. What it means is it's happening. And what happens is these family things, we could call them curses, but I don't want anybody to be afraid of that, okay? But what happens is these things that hinder our growth in God, are familiar with our families and um, they visit us they don't stay they come and go so they're not coming and staying they're coming to afflict and then they leave and then another season they're gonna come back again that's what's happening with her but see you're the dad and I'm the apostle and me and you are gonna pray for her Amen. And we're not going to believe we're going to, we're, we're going to, we are not going to believe that these spirits can have any more effect than they've already had. Amen. Hallelujah. You men of God got him left and right, don't you? Amen. Why don't you put your hand on his back? You guys can pray. Put your hands on your daughter here. Father in the name of Jesus, we do take authority over this family curse. Oh, honey, I do feel God's power all over you right now. And I am in agreement with your Father, and I'm in agreement with the Word of God. No weapon formed against you can prosper. And we plead the blood of Jesus, and we command the blessing to come upon this family and upon your life. And I do loose you from this in Jesus' name. Ah, Brunda Robosata Rabacara Basata Rabacara Baya. Oh, my goodness, honey. I feel the power of God like fire shut up in my bones. A whirlwind of God's Spirit coming upon your life, coming upon the family. Do all that's in your heart, honey. God says, I am with you, Shakara Basaya, to show myself strong. Somebody praise God. Somebody thank him today. Thank you, Lord. 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 Go in victory. Go in victory. Father, we just thank you. Lord, you are the author and the finisher of faith. Lord, we have removed this yoke. Lord, we thank you for this young man. 
and we decree and we declare that who you call, you do qualify. And in the name of Jesus, all the cords connected to yesterday that hold him back, those memories of defeat, those memories that do hold him back, I break the power of them and I release him from those weights and those burns in Jesus' name. And Lord, we do increase the boundaries of his habitation. And I command the blessing of God to be upon his life. In Jesus' name, 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 in Jesus' name. name. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Spirit of God. Lord, open our eyes to see great things you have done. In Jesus' name, I break the fear. I break this fear and I command it to come out. Out, 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 out. Out, 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 out. In Jesus' name. <laughs> My God, it's got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go, got to go. Got to go. Come on, lift your hands and thank God for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're here today. Uh, Lord, we do lay hands upon her. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, for the repositioning of the Spirit of God in your life to fill you and to take you to another level in God, a place of greater revelation and victory. For who the Lord calls, he does qualify. In Jesus' name, speak the word. I release the signs and the wonders and the miracles in her life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. My goodness, something's happening in here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You guys stay with me. Shokara Basata, hold this for me, will you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't you just bring them right here. I'll pray for them here. Look at somebody and tell them something's happening here today. You know, when you get around the Holy Spirit, a lot of things happen. Yeah? Now, I, I, the Lord shows me you're responding to the family curse, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Amen. 
Minister Charles, you need to go ahead and come up here too. Come on up here. Where's mama at? Where's mom? Mom? Mom, where are you, mom? You know, there's a time and a season. There's an appointed hour for things. Your appointed hour has come, honey. I want you to put your arms around her. Brother Charles, put your arm around her. Just stand behind them. We don't know what's going to happen, but something's going to happen. Joanne, your prayers are about to be answered. Church, just stretch your hands towards these people. Now we're going to pull on the Holy Ghost. Oh, in the name of Jesus, every curse. Every curse, oh, every family curse, generational curses. We stand in the gap and make up the hedge right now. And we take our authority as sons and daughters. Holy Ghost, there is an appointed time. And we declare, decree that today is the day of victory. Holy Spirit, show yourself strong today. I command these evil spirits to go in Jesus' name. We close the door right now by the blood of the Lamb of God. And we say you cannot return. In Jesus' name we pray for the release. In Jesus' mighty name, the release from these burdens. The release from the fear. Release from the bondage in Jesus' name. We command the blessing of God upon the family. Oh, Holy Ghost, put your guards around this family. The day of victory has come. I said the day of victory has come. Somebody give God a hand clap. Somebody praise him. My goodness. Full of mercy and grace. 
And Lord, you receive your daughter. Thank you, Holy Spirit, teacher, trainer, instructor, leader, and goddess with the gentleness of your spirit and your voice. Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Lord, we do cast all our cares on you because you care for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, you got this. Thank you, Holy Ghost, we do rest in you. We do rest in you. We do rest in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just rest in that, honey. There it goes. Whoa, yes. Something's happening. Something's happening. My goodness. My goodness. Lord, we believe right now. JC, you're in a new place now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, don't. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I just think you guys are going to get, keep coming all day. Hallelujah. This softly, brother. It's not softly. How many people love Jesus more today? Amen. Amen. You know, God also spoke to Jeremiah about his ability to see. The prophetic ministry, the voice of God, seeing, hearing, yeah? Saying, yeah. How many people feel more qualified? Look at your neighbor and tell them the anointing looks good on you. The anointing looks good on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody shout today. Thank you, Lord. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to release us. But those of you that still want prayer, I'll pray for you. I'm not going anywhere. Holy Ghost isn't going anywhere either. Amen. What's coming up, Pastor Rhonda? What's going on? I don't have no idea what's going on in this church. I'm the last one that finds out. The launch conference. Do you know that we have had more registrations this year than we've ever had? Yeah, not, not church people, not our church people, no, but outside. I mean, we have people from all over, all over the place are coming. I have no idea who they are, but they must know you. <laughs> amen. Because they've obviously found out that you're a king and they want to, they want to meet you. Amen. It's like Sheba wanted to talk to Solomon. Amen. You know what? I really feel that we need to keep our expectation level up. I showed, I told you those, those first um, reports about debt cancellation. Okay, if, if, God can, if you can believe God for healing, you can believe God to help you with that, okay? All things are possible to him that believeth. Give God a chance. Speak the word of God and let it go into your future. Let it go into your future. I know so many people have a struggle with money. It's not money that they got to struggle with. It's what they do with it. It's the big struggle. But we've got to get it right. But let's believe God. When God speaks to us, let's believe him. Now, the Lord spoke to us, and what did he say? He said, I've opened a door for you that no man can shut. He said, there's five things on the other side of the door. Influence, increase, yeah? Are you listening to the words? Influence, increase, expansion, not like this one, <laughs> opportunity, and what? Promotion. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. I received that. I received that. Father, we do so love you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our life, in our families, God, in our church, our ministry, our businesses where we work. Lord, Minister to our boss this week. Bless our bosses, God. Bless them. We do bless up. 
We do bless up in Jesus' name, and we thank you, Lord God, that you're no respecter of persons. What you've done for anyone else, you'll also do for us. And we do hold fast to the word of God, and we decree that this will be the best week we've ever had. In Jesus' name, and all the church said, amen and amen. Come on, give God a big hand clap, and I'll see you on Friday night. Thank you.